save. It doesn't make any difference. It's been a great life. I guess uh, <clears throat> two final questions. Um, and we talked about this before. The, the, the thing that transformed so many men of your generation from boys to men was the Second World War. Oh, absolutely. And do you feel that it, as far as each of yours development was concerned, that was the pivotal thing in your life that, that it really was for me when I went to uh, serve at the 17, uh, I had to become a man, you know. How old were you, one, Sam, when you went in? Uh, 21. I 21. But anyway, uh, you know, it was a great experience. I was, you know, I was, uh, I'm glad I came back. It, uh, uh, it, it certainly changed my lifestyle and my thinking, and uh, although I Joe and I did fool around a little bit in Paris, but you know, that's what the no, hell the kids do. Yeah. But I, when I went to service, I went to Camp Gordon, and uh, we were on maneuvers in 1942 for six months in Tennessee, and uh, the mosquitoes and stuff were really bad. Anyhow, in the next year, I went in, again for six months in 1943. I got had an accident and turned over a jeep, I was leading the convoy, and very frankly, I fell asleep thinking about home and mom. And I had two other guys in the jeep with me, one of them was discharged, the other had a broken shoulder. <clears throat> and it took me to the hospital, I was in the hospital for three months down there. Tell them what happened. <coughs> you were allergic to uh, I was allergic to, to, you know, to a sulfur drug. Oh, sulfur drug. I had an injury in my and they kept me in anyway. Uh, you know, it was, it was a great experience. I uh, never regret it at all. And, while we were in Tennessee, you had to, every three days you had to dig a foxhole. And you go down four or six feet, that's pretty deep. And I was happy to go overseas. I'm really not kidding. I really was happy to get out of the States. Well, I never, I never dug any foxholes aboard ship, but uh, <laughs> it's been a little difficult. Did they have places to go there? <laughs> I love that little story. We uh, used to have to go overside and paint the ship, you know, and they put you on a Jacob's ladder. and. Go down there and had a paintbrush and a gallon of paint. It was hotter than blue blazes. And I said, oh, there goes my paintbrush. And down the ocean it would go, you know, and I'd dive in after it about 30 feet. <laughs> and the guy says, you better make it pretty fast over that bow door. He said, there's a shark out there. And he wasn't kidding either. <laughs> I think I broke a record that day. I uh -huh. got there pretty fast. But uh, at least I did some dumb things on the board, board ship. You well, know, yeah. talk, talking about age, uh, when I was a drill instructor, I had this fellow come in one of my groups, and he was 36 years old, just missed the draft. Little fellow, he was a former teacher. And I felt so sorry for him that I, whenever we went on a hike, I'd make the, uh, some of the other guys carry his pack for him. And I thought, what the hell is this guy doing in the service? He's 36 years old. Here I am, 19, twice my age, just about. And I thought that was old. Well, you know, uh, while he was speaking of the, uh, the service, I think one of the greatest things that ever happened to me was that they sent me to Aberdeen on two different occasions, once as a machinist and once as a welder, and uh, right. I really got an education there. You know, that that was my future. That's where I ended up as a machinist and welder. I have no regrets, and uh, that is something I even taught Marty, and it's a great experience even to get in and use a welder, and use a lathe, and use some of the other stuff. Something that uh, he still does. It. Yeah, I still yeah. do it, which is fine. Yeah. He it taught is. me to use a lathe. <clears throat> you, you messed up the first one too. <laughs> it well, is. Well, you know. when when you reopened in Front Royal, you built a machine shop. It had a wonderful machine. All shop. All kinds of equipment in there. Beautiful machine shop. Yeah. Did a lot of stuff with the government. Yeah. In fact, Irv would. We had one. Uh, we were holding up Martha pretty good. Oh, we're in good shape. We had pretty one good. job. We had yeah. eight hundred things to make for the government. They were like rollers under a crane. And uh, Irv would turn them down part of the way on a lathe, and uh, I would finish them. We had to have them finished in a certain period of time. But uh, we lived up in the apartment up in Fabian, and uh, Rosie was two years old when we moved to Washington Avenue. So uh, that was an education I had never anticipated in my lifetime, and something that I've certainly used a great advantage in my lifetime. One of the things we we're going back way back when when uh, we were on Baker Street. And we used to break batteries down there. And Sam had seen this rig in a, in a magazine or something. And he made uh, one thing for long batteries, so he said, well, and another one for the regular batteries. And I'd stand behind on a, on a case, some kind of thing, and I'd drop them in there. And then the, the casing, the 
lead would fall out and then they'd have to pick it up and shovel and put it in steel drums and we'd throw the cases on the side. Well, all this acid would run, <laughs> run right down the, to the gutter and hell, it ate the hell out of the gutter. And if that happened today, yeah, well, you all city. know what it would have cost yeah, People you. used to take those battery cases home and they burn them in their stoves. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine Good that? heat. Oh, I know. <laughs> With all that lead, uh, acid in them. Marty, I guess another sad day for me is when I was working over at the Riverton Lime and Stone and I lost my eye. A piece mm -hmm. of steel flew in my eye. That wasn't a very happy day for me. No, I remember that. Yeah. But the thing that surprised me is after he got his uh, good eye fixed that it didn't help his other one at all. And I, I was kind of hoping it would. Well, Maddie was mad he been telling everybody he was going to have the other operator on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, when I had that camera, you, know, you can't, can't imagine how I can see it. I mean, uh, we're okay. We're not dying yet. We're okay. <clears throat> Everybody's got a cold. But you know, getting back to the final thing to the... Your war experience is remarkable. I mean, some of the grandchildren or some of the great grandchildren that ultimately will see this won't realize that all five of you, all five of the brothers, were in the service, and how remarkable it is that no one was oh, seriously right. hurt or got yeah. killed. Yeah. You know, there's probably very few people that have family similar to yours can say that, and it's just right. a blessing. That well, Marty, you're speaking of that. You know, Joe and I were in the uh, National Guard 116th Infantry 29th Division Headquarters Company. And we both got out in 1940. And many of our, many of our friends, they, they went into Normandy, like yeah. Biff Clo and some of the other yeah. people. Many had been Dick Kern, Biff Clo, a lot of And the two Manuel brothers. Two and Manuel brothers. Uh, lost their lives there. So, you know, we got out in town, I guess. Well, just well I, the only uh, closest I am thinking Sam and Joe <laughs> came to losing their lives is when they were with a couple of women in opposite beds, and they both fell out of the bed and damn near broke their necks. That was Winchester. Was that in Winchester? Uh, one other time, <laughs> in, in, in Paris, uh, Joe and I met, and we were in the, cat, uh, the open air cafe, uh, sidewalk thing, <coughs> some other friends, and these two good looking girls came by. Yeah. And, Where was this? In Paris. Oh. And Joe says to Sam, well, of course, Joe, hope Nicky doesn't mind this, but Joe was around nurses all the time, you know, and he, he knew pretty much what to do, being a medic. And anyway, uh, he said, well, he's fine, went up and he introduced me, he said, my friend, you know, brothers, and he spoke pretty good French, and went to this hotel that Joe was very familiar with, and they only had one room left, and uh, went upstairs, and they had a double bed and a single bed, and Joe had his camera with him, and he said, well, you all take your clothes off, and the three of you get in bed, and of course, you know, I always listen to my older brother, and uh, <laughs> when he got in bed, he's taking all these pictures and everything, so... After he left, I told him, well, Joe, uh, <coughs> please destroy that film. I never want to get that. No, heck no, you would be, we got to pack home. Everybody's going to see that film. Well, finally, when we got back, he told me he didn't have a flash, and the damn thing didn't come out. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any film in there either. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you all want to ask us while you're sitting there? Anything you might be interested in us uh, telling you about? The, the off-camera allusion is to my very pretty and beautiful cousin, Kaz and Kitty. You know, <coughs> when you all were growing up, did did you always help your mom? Did you Because you washed dishes all the time. I mean, well, we all did. Oh, we all pitched in. I mean, it, it, once you finished dinner, well, you you're di you carried your dishes in. Kitty. We all helped wash them. Of course, back then, you had to dry them, too, because you didn't have them. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. Mother, that she had <coughs> some kind of eczema. 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 And Dad would come home from work, and we knew that we didn't open our mouth while he was listening to the Goldbergs or Amos and Andy or who else was Love 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 and Abner. I mean, we sat there like mummies. <coughs> if we opened our mouth, boy. Well, that was a great experience. We yes, always, it was. We, you know, yeah. we followed the series, you know, like uh, there was a, a movie thing. And there was a black fellow that had a garage, and uh, I ben remember. Right out. Yeah, and I ben remember right he used to come over. And Dad, they would discuss what it, 
how they on the programs that they heard on the radio, <laughs> how they would say, "Wasn't this funny? Wasn't that fun?" I Louis, what do that. you think? And he smoked a cigar. Louis, what do you think about that? You know, yeah, smoking his damn cigar. <laughs> they had the Sarah Zane Farr Company close to us, and they used to have about once a month or so they would have these wrestling contests. And Dad belonged to the Farr Company, and they get shoes away something. One time he came, Tommy came home, he had four pair of shoes. They had to fit somebody, and he would do that. He'd go down and wrestle for a while and bring back the shoes. Another uh, thing, speaking about the fire company, uh, when uh, Joe and I were born, we were living on uh, Cork Street. Cork Street was a second-story apartment. Actually, it was three stories. Well, I've got a picture. It was three stories. Yeah. And, uh, Can't prove with me. I wasn't We there. lived on a store and a half. But anyhow, uh, Naomi and Betty were talking on the stairway. They had a bunch of papers. They were lighting these matches about who loves and who doesn't. And uh, they caught these papers on fire. And I, I understand I was on a high chair on this balcony up on the third floor. And uh, so when the fire company came, Dad saw where it was. And they, uh, they say that he fainted <laughs> when, he <laughs> alive, when he got there. Yeah, Betty, talking about the fire company, it was just below our scrapyard. We were on Baker on Street, Baker. and I—I uh, I was a member of the uh, Sarah Zane Fire Company, and Mr. Brown, uh, he was the uh, driver. Driver, and when the alarm went off, I, I took off, man. I took off and down there. Now, if he was coming up the hill, uh, he he slow up enough for me to get up on the truck. He like, didn't have a lot of help, and when he's going down the hill, I had to run like crazy to get on there. But he'd wait on me. He knew I was coming, and uh, we, I would just go to all those fires with him. Sarah Zane Fire Hall, right yeah. down the road. The old well, building's still there. They're still there? Oh, yeah. Well, it, it was not a far house. No, it was not a far house. Uh, I don't know what's so in there Being so close to your mom, how did you all feel when your, when your dad got remarried? Was that a hard time? Uh, no, it, it, it didn't bother me any. Uh, uh, too bad Joe wasn't here. He could tell you the truth about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Maddie was, Maddie was a different kind of person. Of course, you kids remember. Yeah. She but she was good to you all. Yes, she was. Because they, we lived on, we had moved to uh, Variable Avenue. And Dad and Maddie moved to, in our house on Battle Avenue. And the, all the kids went to Virginia Avenue School, and they'd come by, they'd always stop at Maddie's. And I guess she helped you across the street or, or whatever. But, and she had a lot of friends in Winchester. She I did still, that. I still run into people and say, you know, I remember Maddie and what a wonderful lady she was. Didn't she play but, bridge or something? Pardon? Did she play bridge or play cards or something? She had a group that she... I, I she know. used to uh, call and say, now, you all want to go out tonight? I'll come over and babysit, and she yeah. would. She'd yeah. babysit. Yeah, I, I feed, don't remember Maddie at all. She would feed oh, the kids. Mm, Whatever well, Sunday. Was, uh, <coughs> and then there was uh, Sarah. Sarah, yeah. I remember Who? Sarah. 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 Was he married to Sarah? <laughs> yeah, he married to Sarah. Talking about Sarah, I never, of course, after Dad passed away, well, and, and, uh, on, on, after his funeral, we came over to my, my house, and Sam almost got into it with her son with a Oh, it was awful. Oh, he, he was giving Fritzy oh, help about something. God. It really made me. I said, you know, what, what was his know? name? I don't know. Googie. Uh, I said, what <laughs> a time to bring up a. You know, he didn't like Fritzy. He yeah. said Fritzy was mean to her mother yeah. and everything. And he started, you know, really giving her a bad mouth. And I said, you know, I think maybe you and I ought to do something about her. Shut up. It was just the most inappropriate thing to take at mm -hmm. the time, really. But <laughs> after Dad died, I went by. I'd I drove by the house where they were living on Woodland Avenue, and I saw a mattress sitting outside the, on the porch. <clears throat> so I stopped and went over. They had taken every bit of furniture after, out of that house, every bit of it. And he was in the furniture business too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, and the only reason they didn't take the mattress is because they probably couldn't get it on a truck. Didn't leave us a damn thing. I did get <clears throat> some of Dad's after shave lotion that I still have. Well, I've got his little cap, I still have well, that. Now, I, I remember that because I ended up with a a little round thing of, I think it was Old Spice or something mm. that, that he wore, but I remember hardly any of you got anything that That's was right. above yeah. granddad's. Well, I don't believe I ever got anything. Not that, you know, we didn't have any <laughs> antiques or anything like that, but it was, it was just the thought that, you know, she say, is there anything you all want? Charles, I'll tell you what probably bought that on, really. I was visiting one time, and Dad and Maddie and I were sitting in the, in the, sitting in the living room, and that hutch they had against the wall. You mean Sarah? Wall, Sarah. Had against the uh, wall, and Dad said, uh, Sam, when I go, you can have that. 
Well, I knew damn well looking at her, I'd never get it. I didn't need it anyway, yeah. so they figured they better move everything. I didn't yeah, make any. I didn't need any of that yeah. stuff. I, I love that little hat he used to wear all the time. I have it hanging up in my little office in the, at the house. It's fine. So, uh, but I, another I, good time was when uh, first uh, Martrice and I was going to get married, and uh, Charles, I think, had already bought his house on Battle Avenue. On ba Battle Avenue, Avenue. seventy-five hundred dollars, brand new. It was a wooden home, full basement, have any, uh, had an un unfinished attic, had nice steps going up to the attic. They had toilets in it too? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I, I tell tell the story that I paid seventy five hundred dollars for the for the house and I paid the same thing for my first Cadillac, yeah. seventy five hundred dollars. <laughs> well, you know, we got under the GI Bill with no down payment. Heck, if we'd had made five hundred dollars down payment we could Forget about it. Our payments were forty-five, forty-five a month, That's including what mine insurance was. and taxes. Well, I, I was going to have one more question to ask, but you already answered it, and that was going to be, why do you think your family got along so well? But I think anybody that's watched this tape understands that. <laughs> Is there anything else, Kitty or Kaz, that you guys want to ask, or anything oh, else? I'm, I'm just looking over to my girl. Yeah. And, and if you all want to say, I or? think playing cards probably kept it pretty close more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I, I and it still say, does, you know. Yeah, right wanna, now, just for the, their information, uh, <coughs> we've been playing setback for years. Of course, when Joe was alive, there were four Zuckermans, and when Jimmy Samples was alive, there were three Samples, and and I forget Joe's friend that played with us. Uh, yeah, and we play uh, every other week back then, but now we're playing every week, every Monday night. And hell, we've been. How long have you been playing with us, Marty? It's been at least three years. Well, I'd say, I'd say maybe, maybe as many as we played about twenty-five years. Oh, yeah. At least, yeah, we played a long well, time. So we <laughs> see each other at least every every Monday night. Not that we like each other that much, but uh, we still see each other. We we well, hug each other. Well, when Charles plays, he has to be a real nuisance. He never knows what's been who dealt. Who dealt? Who? What's what's? And what's Eric, Trump? Couldn't, what's Eric Trump? couldn't hear and he couldn't see anything. I see yeah. better now. <laughs> well, that's one of the best things that's probably happened. Is that a diamond or a heart? I couldn't tell. And now he's going to be able to tell. I couldn't see what the cards were. And, uh, and I made a couple smooth. of boo boos because of that. Yeah. I thought there was something else. Well, I thought you used that as an excuse. <laughs> well, you were talking about the different generations, and I think one of the things I remember most growing up about the Zuckerman family was our reunions that we had every year. Hmm. Dentley Jackson's or whatever, yeah. and everybody got yeah. together, and then it seemed like it just ended. And well, we're still having them in front row. Yeah, yeah. But I we did for a while. We didn't. If, uh, <laughs> the past three or four years, I hope we will get my patio finished. I found out with uh, Marty, Marty May, the guy, a contractor, ran out of stone, and evidently that particular like uh, flagstone is not available right now. Mm -hmm. And he may have located some. If we get it finished, come May. Nothing happens. It just seems like it's so much harder to get people together now. Well, well, we, we hope that by the time our, uh, our great grandchildren see this, that he has Man, finished. they got the damage bunch of stuff over you in the same. Look, they got flagstone. They got all kinds of stuff. Freddie Block. Freddie Block. They sure do. Check Richmond. Sam, they just put on a whole front there with that stuff all over. And if they don't have it, they can probably get it. Marty, you call them tomorrow and ask them if they have any dark orchard. Marty, do that, will you? Smile cat. Oh, Marty. We've called Richmond and every place else. Madrid. Marty, did you hear that? Smile kitty. Sure mark it down, I'll call, but I'll never remember to let you mark it down. Get a piece of paper and mark it down for me, kitty. What's that? Yeah, I got it. Dark Orchard? Yeah. Dark Orchard. What color is it? It's Dark Orchard. <laughs> well, my dear father and my dear uncles and my dear cousins, I appreciate you guys sitting down and doing this for me. Uh, another five years, we'll do it again. See if your memories are still the same or if you've forgotten everything you talked about. Um, this is going to be a wonderful thing. Hopefully we can make copies of it for everybody's grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And the only one here that's not on this is going to be me, and I don't mind being the disembodied voice. <laughs> so thanks again, guys, and we really Thank appreciate you, it. Our part. No, it's okay. They, yeah, you can still get it. <coughs> no, got, look in the camera and smile. Here in a dark orchard. Bye. Flagstone. Flagstone.